Okay, go ahead, state your point and uh, your case, whatever, and I'll state mine. We'll take it from there. Okay, basically, uh, so we're talking about abortion. Um, I am pro-life. I am against abortion because it unjustly takes the life of an innocent human being here. Basically, uh, the whole debate really boils down to the question of what is the unborn? Uh, if it's not a person, then I would agree with most pro-choicers that, uh, you know, there's no justification required, you know, do whatever you want, um, you know, as a, but if it is a person, then no justification is adequate. So basically, um, I would argue my case, I would say two steps would be are required for my, my argument for the humanity of the unborn. One science, first is scientific, second is philosophical. So uh, scientifically, we know that the unborn from conception is a distinct, living, whole human, human organism, human being. Um, two reasons. One, the law of biogenesis, uh, which states that species reproduce after their own kind. So dogs reproduce puppies, cats reproduce kittens, and humans reproduce humans. So we know it's uh, genetically a human being. Uh, and it also, we can take that to mean members of the species Homo sapiens. In fact, also, if you look up any embryology textbook, uh, we, it's pretty, the, the, the debate is pretty much settled as to what kind of organism it is. It's a human organism. Even Peter Singer, um, very adamant uh, pro-choice philosopher, even concedes this. Uh, he writes in his book, Practical Ethics, he says that we can, if we take human being to mean member of the species Homo sapien, then it is no doubt that a, uh, a human being conceived from a sperm and egg is genetically a human being. It's a whole human being in the sense that it's not a part of another organism the way fingers or toes are. It's its own distinct organism, separate from the mother. And so, yeah, I, I, guess, that, I guess that's basically a good summary of the scientific case. And then philosophically, uh, there's no essential difference between uh, the unborn, a fetus, versus the adult, versus an adult that would justify uh, killing a fetus but not an adult. So I would, here I would invoke what the, the sled test, as Stephen Schwartz calls it. There's really only four differences, size, level of development, environment, degree of dependency. So we know that size isn't relevant because... You know, body size doesn't determine value. I mean, men are generally larger than women, so but yet we wouldn't say that men have a bigger right to life than um, than women. The size just can't be it. Next is a level of development here. True, adults are more developed than a fetus, but it doesn't seem to me that level of development should count either. I mean, again, teenagers are more developed than uh, infants or toddlers, yet we wouldn't say that teenagers have a greater right to life than infants so, or, or toddlers. Uh, next would be environment, location. So location doesn't seem to work either because it doesn't, you know, where you are doesn't seem to determine what or who you are. Like I don't change what I am just by moving locations. Like if I leave my house or get off a plane, I'm still me. So likewise, it just doesn't seem that uh, traveling a few inches down the birth canal makes any real difference here. Uh, then it's degree of dependency. It's true, you know, because some people might say viability is when a fetus, you know, because should be protected, but that doesn't make sense either because if depend, being dependent on something means we can kill you, then that would mean we'd have, we can kill people who are on, who have pacemakers or who are, have machines breathing for them or even Siamese conjoined twins. There are certain cases of Siamese conjoined twins where they're, they're connected in such a way that they're dependent on each other's bodies here. And so but that doesn't mean we can kill one of them just because they're dependent on each other's bodies. So basically, yeah, that, I think that'd be a good summary here. Size, level of development, environment, degree of dependency. And so, and I guess to, to get to the final part here, um, be, uh, the unborn being a valuable human being that we should protect the same as an adult. Like, for we would, for example, we wouldn't kill, uh, uh, you know, people offer all kinds of reasons for abortion, like, uh, you know, it's going to be a financial strain on the woman, but we wouldn't kill two-year-olds. 
because of their own financial strain. If, like, say, a woman can't afford to raise a two-year-old, we wouldn't say it's okay to kill the two-year-old. So likewise, if I'm right, as I've just argued, that the unborn is a person like that two-year-old, uh, we wouldn't. We should protect. We should kill the unborn the same way we would kill the two-year-old. So that would be a, a summary, I guess, of my case. I can always unpack that later, of course. So, yeah, I guess okay. that, that's it. So, balls in your court, I suppose. Okay. Uh, um, what I would say directly against everything you just said is that this is the problem that you have. Um, first of all, I, I'm pro-choice. My name is Brett Strong. I'm pro-choice. I'm a non-Christian. Um, I enjoy parts of Christianity, but for the most part, uh, uh, Christianity is a religion to me based on fiction. Jesus, the New Testament, Jesus is a fictional character. The, the biblical God is a fictional God. Um, so the Bible itself is based on fiction. I'm a non-Christian. I enjoy parts of Christianity, but I don't like the dogma. So my ministry, Brett Strong's ministry, is about stopping Christian dogma. Like, obey the Bible, obey God, obey Jesus, you're going to go to hell, give your money to the church, all that stuff. I'm against it, so that's why I'm here, to go against Christian dogma. And one of the Christian dogma, well, it could be atheist too, but as far as the dogma, you're a Christian, so I'm confronting your dogma as far as you're saying abortion is wrong. And I would say right off the bat to just nullify that, you, Scott um, Klusendorf, Stephanie Gray, Greg Gucol, Frank Turk, Sean McDowell, Alan Schumann, Brett Kunkel, all, all you guys, all you're doing is speaking opinion. That's all you're doing. I mean, I don't have, I, you know, I haven't even looked into the matter that much because it's so simple to defeat Christians or at least neutralize them. And, and what you're doing right now and what they all do is you're, all you're doing when you say abortion is wrong, it's just your opinion. It's just your feelings and emotions and your thoughts. That's all it is. Because we're all humans. And since you say, well, abortion is wrong. Scott Klosendorf, abortion is wrong. Stephanie Gray, abortion is wrong. Well, there's millions and millions and billions of people who say abortion is right. So just like you say abortion is wrong, I can bring tons of people who say abortion is, is right. So who's the tiebreaker? There is no tiebreaker. Because you said you're not going to bring in God or Jesus, right? So we're talking human saying abortion is wrong, human saying abortion is right. So we're even. So there is no tiebreaker. So at the very most, all you can say, Cody, is to say, hey, I don't believe abortion is, is right. And, and then you have to go on your way because you have no higher authority than you. Just like the person like me, pro-choice. There is no higher authority than me. We're just humans. We're all making our own opinions and, and, and drawing our own conclusions on abortion. We're all so to speak, right within our own heart. What's true for you is true for you, Cody. And what's true for me is true for me. And what's true for a woman who has an abortion is true for her. And what's true for a woman who doesn't like an abortion is true for her. We're all even in this. There's no one who can take the, who can stop the, tie, the tiebreaker. So all you're doing is speaking your opinion and you can't escape it. So you have no authority. So all you can say ultimately is like, yeah, this is my opinion. I'm Cody Nelson, and this is my opinion. That's all you can say ultimately, just like me. All I can say is, hey, I'm Brett Strong, and my opinion is people should have the choice of, of abortion. But there is no right or wrong. There's only In America, there's only legal, something being legal or illegal. But there is no right or wrong. It's a choice. It's your opinion. So, Cody, you can believe what you want to believe, just like Scott, Klosendorf, Stephanie Gray, Greg Cole. But it's all an opinion. That's all it is. And no one can top that. Um, go ahead. I'll bounce it back to you off that one. All right. Um, not sure I like the word opinion here, but we'll get into that for a moment. But um, uh, I, I, do you mind, I'd like to ask you a question here. Uh, do you oppose infanticide? Uh, no. Uh, if, if you go to countries like China, one child um, law, places like India that really want boys, um, I think it's really stupid for infanticide because look at China. you got 20 to 40 million men that will have no women, no wives for them. They're, they're, they're like a deficit of 20 to, to 40 million uh, uh, women, a deficit of that in China. So you're going to have 20 to 40 million men with no women. That's stupid because to me, I'm heterosexual, love women. And to have, live a life with 20 million men around me with no women, that to me is a death sentence. 
Um, that's that's kind of like a torture to me. So I don't agree with a fantasize, but I don't say it's wrong because that's their call. You know, to each his own ultimately. Because if I say to them they're wrong, Cody, they're gonna say back to me, "Well, I don't agree with you," and so we're stuck. So therefore, we gotta shake hands and say, "Okay, I don't believe you're right. You don't believe I'm right," and shake and shake hands and go home. Just like you, Cody. All you can do is say to a person who believes in pro-choice like me, all you can say is, "Hey, I'm Cody Nelson. This is my opinion. That's it. You have no more authority. That's all Scott Klusendorf can do. That's all Stephanie Gray can do. That's all Gray can call Frank Torx, Sean McDowell, Alan Schumann, Brett Coco. All they can do is say, "This is my opinion. That's it. I have a deep feeling, a deep emotion. That's it." That's it. So women who have abortions shouldn't feel uh, um, condemned. They shouldn't feel guilty. They shouldn't feel anything because all you guys are doing, you pro-lifers, all you're doing is giving your opinion. That's all it is when it boils down. Well, when I ask you against infanticide, like, for example, consider the case of that woman. I, I forget what her name was, though. Um, a couple of years ago, she drowned her infant in the water. Do you think that that should be illegal? Do you think it's right for that to be illegal? Well, to... so let's say someone like someone who maybe just doesn't want their infant or whatever, and nobody really wants the infant, so they just they just kill the infant. Do you think that should be illegal? Go to China, Cody. Go to China. They they have their people have babies born, and I read a story one time in, in, uh, a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago rather, and they were talking about a couple, a couple who had a baby, and they wanted a boy, China. And the baby was born because they didn't, you know, couldn't afford sonograms. Poor people living in the back country of, uh, of China. The baby was born. It was a girl. You know what they did? There was an American missionary lady that was there looking at the birth, watching it. They took the baby girl, just born, dumped. There, there was a bucket of water they used to, to, to deliver the baby, a bucket of water in the middle of nowhere. They took the baby girl, cut the biblical cord, and just put her head first into the water. And the woman got up and the husband got up and they just walked away. Didn't care. They wanted a boy. It was it. So to them, they would say, Cody, yeah, do what you want. To each his own. So you think that infanticide should be legal? No. You think it should? You what? think it should? So you think? I'm saying, do you think it should be legal for a couple to kill their infant, the to, newborn infant? Well, it, it, it depends on where you are. Hey, like I said, I don't well, agree. I, I first, like I said, I don't agree with infanticide. I don't agree with gender-based abortions because, like I said, in China, you're going to have... I was talking about gender-based abortions, or, or I was just talking about infanticide for, you know, whatever reason. Maybe the same reason a woman might abort. What if instead of just aborting, you know, she has the baby, the baby's, you know, newborn and everything, healthy baby, and she just, just they, you know, she, you know, they just decide, you know, I just, I just don't want this child here, so I'm just going to kill this child, this infant. Do you think that should be legal? See, you said the perfect word. Do I think? See, I can think all I want, but you and I both know people think the opposite. So for me to even say yes or no wouldn't matter because I'm giving my thoughts. So the person who is, who's in China or Africa or Southeast Asia would say to me, hey, uh, I believe I, I can have a perfectly healthy baby born and I can kill the child. And they do without regard. There's no legal issues. Many countries, they do it. So you're right. All I can do is say I can give my opinion, just like you. We're both stuck in our opinion, all of us. Matter so of fact, not the, not not, not well, the okay, well, okay, so, so then basically, why can't I, so I so you know let, 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 let's suppose for the sake of argument that infanticide were legal in this country. I mean, there really be no point debating it, then, right? Just let it be legal. You've got your opinion. I've got mine. Woman wants to kill her newborn infant man. That's just my opinion. Let her do it here. Let, let's just let it be legal. Why can't we do that then? Because this is Why America. Hey, this is America, and though as you and I both know, those laws don't. We don't have those type of laws. What, but, but but if you want to speak hypothetically, do you want to speak hypothetically? Sure. Okay. Hypothetically, just say in America, they would say, "Hey, kill your newborn. Doesn't matter. To each his own." Then I would say, "To each his own." I respect that. 
Because guess what? You know, a woman can only have so many babies in her lifetime. So if she wants to kill the baby she has, hey, that that's her issue. That's her problem. Because she she won't have any kids, and maybe later on when she gets older, she's gonna wish and cry that she did keep those kids. So, but as far as the the something being legal, as far as infanticide, if in in America if there was law that you can kill your own kids, yeah, to each his own then. Because you know what, Cody, I can't rule the world. I can't take care or look after the world's problems. Everyone's got to be in control of themselves ultimately. But could the law be wrong? Or do you think there do you put it, put it another way? Do you think there are cases where? Uh, we are obligated or that it would be right for us to change the law. Well, we're in a democratic society, so that's it, it. Cody, if you look through the our entire uh, American history, laws have been changed over and over and over. There was a time that blacks 300 years ago were considered three-fifths human. Those laws have been changed. There's times that women were, were had no rights up until what 1950. If a woman in Texas got married in 1950, she had to give all her assets to the husband. So laws change all the time. So you know this, Cody. So what you're saying is yeah, something you so already wasn't know. That, wasn't it a good? It was a good thing that we changed those laws, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely right. So then. Is it possible then that don't you think there could be laws today that should be changed the same way that laws that had slavery legal should have been changed? See, but you're caught right there again because let's take it back to slavery. Slavery, white people, uh, uh, um, enslaving black people. Well, obviously the blacks wanted to be free, right? Like this, this law in America saying it is legal to own black slaves. That was the law of the land. Well, at the same time as those blacks said, this, these laws are illegal. These laws are unjust. As you know, there was tons of white people in America, Christians, no doubt, Catholics, evangelical, Protestants, Methodists, owned, owned slaves and justified it. So you had slavery going on, the black slave saying this is unjust, the white slave master saying this is just, see? Back to opinion. So, so you're saying they shouldn't have even bothered debating the issue. They should have just left everything as it was, kept slavery legal because everybody had their own opinion? No, see, here's the point. Here's the lesson to learn, if you don't already know it. The world belongs to the strong, not to the weak, to the strong. So that's why it's important for every individual to be as strong as they can, every family to be as strong as they can, every ethnic group to be as strong as you can, because there will be people that will come against you throughout history that will try to impose their opinion upon you, like the Germans did to the Jews. They imposed their 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 opinions upon the Jews, saying, Jews, you're, you're, you're not even human. So we're going to crush you and murder you in the most heinous ways. So you have to be so it so the world comes down to the strong make the laws and whether right or wrong doesn't matter. What matters is, hey, if you're strong, you make the rules. That's the way life works. It always has and always will. So you think that I shouldn't force my opinion on other people, right? Not force it. I believe that I did a, a debate on abortion, my first one last week. Because my, my specialty is the Bible, as far as the New Testament, Jesus. I did, I've did debated Greg Kukul, Jay Warren. I've been on Redemption Radio. I've been on STR Radio. I've been on Backpack Radio. I debate people about Jesus, God, worldview. So abortion was never into my radar. Um, but I, I found it interesting last week, so I was like, hey, you know what? Let's go for it. Um, now, what was the question you just asked? I said, do you think I should not be forcing my opinion on other people? Oh, what you should be doing is be willing to sit down and have conversations with people about this matter. That's beautiful. No one's going to sit there and deny you a, 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 the seat at the table to conversate, to say, hey, if you just some Cody, if you just, and, and I'm speaking to Scott Klusendorf, Stephanie Gray, Gregor Cole, Sean McDowell, all you guys, if they just come to the table and sit down and say, hey, pro-lifers, I mean, people who believe in pro-choice. You know, this is our opinion. What do you guys think? Give us your opinion. We'll give you our opinion. And after the talks, the debate is over, everyone get up, shake hands, go eat dinner and go home and live your own lives. Because ultimately you can't control individuals. So 
you have a right and everyone has a right to sit at the table. This is a, a, a democratic society. That's based on everyone sitting at the table and talking about it and voting about it. But to go above your opinion and say, no, you're wrong and let me force my opinion upon you, that's wrong. That, 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 but, isn't that, but isn't that what you're doing on me? You're trying to convince me that you're right. No, what and I'm... That you're, aren't you saying you're right and that everyone else is wrong? No. That you're saying you're right that you shouldn't force people, your opinion on other people and that anybody who disagrees with you on that is wrong. Seems kind of self-defeating to me. No, that's not self-defeating because what I'm speaking is truth and what you're speaking is untruth. Because, like I said, you're I'm speaking facts. You're not speaking facts. The fact is, Cody, you're speaking your opinion when you say abortion is wrong. When I say, hey, abortion is neither right or wrong, and even if you wanted to call it that, you're still stuck in your humanness. And since we're all humans, no one can dominate the other human as far as opinions. An opinion is an opinion. So I don't know exactly where you're going with this, but the point is, is that... Okay, well, I, I said earlier I don't like using the word opinion because it, it kind of makes me think of like, you know, for example, like I may have an opinion that say, um, you know, I, I, that maybe Dark Knight Rises is one of the greatest movies ever made and some may might disagree with that, you know. Yeah, we could disagree on that, but okay. But the problem, though, is that uh, moral issues aren't like that, though. Um, like when I say rape is wrong, that it is wrong to, to rape someone – you know, I'm not just speaking opinion. I'm saying that, you know, I am right when I say rape is wrong. And if you disagree, you are just as mistaken as the man who says two plus two equals five. Okay, here. okay, stop right there. How can you say rape is absolutely wrong? How? What authority do you stand on? Because you just said before we started, you're not, gonna, you're not bringing in the Bible, right? So what no. authority do you stand on to say you're right? Because I'm telling you, no, you're not right. You're giving your opinion. And in your, in your mind, you're right. But in reality, reality says, no, Cody, you're not right. You're just stating your opinion. That's all you're doing. So so tell me right now, tell the audience, what authority do you stand on to say I'm right? Because I'm going to tell you you're wrong. I'm going to point this out to you right now. You're dead wrong. Well, but but, so, but what authority do you stand on? Because if you stand uh, on yourself, then you're equal. If you stand on yourself, Cody. I mean, I give, what? I get a reason. No, 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 no. Sure. I give reasons for my position. You know, when I was arguing earlier that the humanity of the unborn, you notice I gave scientific arguments, right? You know, I, I, embryology, you know, law of biogenesis and everything. And then I moved on to give philosophical reasons for why I think that the unborn have as much value as adults here. Now, you can disagree with that if you want to, but you're going to have to tell me why you disagree and where you think I've gone wrong or made error in my reasoning here. You've gone wrong... Because you're promoting your opinion as truth. Your opinion is only truth to you. It's not truth to society. Go to China right now. Go to parts of Africa. Go to Southeast Asia. They would tell you, Cody, you're wrong. Abortion is not wrong. Abortion is right and it's justifiable. They would tell you, you know this. There's billions of people right, would right, tell you this. Tell so so what, what okay, so I'm going to ask you a question, man. No, no, hang, hang on one second. Hang on. What authority do you have to trump billions of people who say abortion is right? What authority? I want to know it. Because I don't see any... An argument. Okay, an argument. Ar okay. Our argument is not a fact. You're, when you say I'm arguing, you're already conceding the fact. You can't prove it. Sc well, Scott? I mean, if you mean, if you mean prove beyond a, a shadow of a doubt where you can't possibly be wrong, I mean, no. No, there no one many, can. Thank you. There are very few things you can prove like it, that. That's, that's a ridiculous that, thing. No, no, no. That's life. That's the way life works, Cody. That's reality. If you don't like reality, that's fine. That's probably why but you're a Christian. I can, but I do think I can prove my position beyond a reasonable doubt. I think I have good reasons for my position. And so does the opposite side. They would tell you I have great if, reasons. If, yeah, that's right. You can disagree, but then you'd have to give an argument. You'd have to try and give some – you'd have to show where my arguments have gone wrong and why I am wrong. And then we can go, from, we can go back and forth. No, there. you don't. All one has to do is say to you, Cody, what I'm saying right now. Cody – you're only speaking to your your opinion. That's it. That's all you're doing. When you say abortion is wrong, it's just your opinion. You're a human being like everyone else. Everyone's allowed to give their opinion. But an opinion is an opinion and a stance. So you have not given me anything to justify your opinion being anything beyond an opinion. 
saying, hey, scientifically, it says this, and philosophy says that. That does not give you a ground to stand on and call other people wrong. Because in philosophy, any philosopher would tell you there's plenty of disagreement in philosophy. So for you to even bring up the word philosophy shows you that either you don't know what you're talking about or you, you I, I don't know. Because philosophers would tell you there's big disagreement. So, so, right. so tell me. So, but there was also disagreement about whether the, the Earth was the center of the universe at one time. Again, that would be ridiculous to say that it's just your opinion and nobody's right or wrong about that. Nobody was right or wrong until they proved it. There's disagreement. Oh, just my point is, just because there's disagreement over an issue doesn't mean that nobody's right. Just okay. Like there was disagreement over whether the Earth was the center of the universe. Okay. But that didn't mean that somebody wasn't right. We have empirical evidence proving the Earth is round, right? You're empirical. Right. You cannot We're give me. No, no, no. You know, no, you're caught. No, 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 Cody. Hang on a second. You're caught. Give me empirical evidence abortion is wrong. You're caught. Before the world, you're caught. Empirical. Go, go for it. I'm shutting up. Well, I mean, science doesn't speak to morality. No, no, no. Empirical. No, no, no. You, you're hesitating. I, well, empirical. I did, give, I did give scientific evidence no, that no. it's human organism, which I haven't heard you deny yet. Hey, so. science would tell you that science is not about right or wrong. So for you're you right. to state science... And then try to present that as right or wrong is invalid. No, I was no, I was not presenting that. Remember, I said my case has two parts to it. I argued scientifically that the unborn is a human organism, a member of the species Homo sapiens. Now, of course, science can't tell us what's right or wrong any more than science can tell us whether the eugenics project exactly. Is right or wrong. There, we have to turn to philosophy. But science can help inform the discussion because. I mean, if it could be shown scientifically, right, that the unborn was not a human organism, right, that it, you know, it just wasn't human, then I would very, I would change, I would abandon my pro-life position if that were the case. I would have to. If it's not a human organism, then the foundation, one of the key foundation for my argument against abortion would collapse, and I'd have no reason to be against it. And? Oh, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I haven't heard anybody. I mean, nobody that I'm aware of disputes the scientific evidence that it's a human organism. Well, you know what, Cody? So, okay, right there. Let's just say the fetus embryo is a baby, a human, person, whatever you want to call it. I'll give you 100% of that. Okay. So, so what? <laughs> it, it, I can take you to China right now, Cody. I can take you to China, Africa, India, Southeast Asia, Cambodia, Vietnam. Indonesia, Philippines, they would tell you, I don't care, Cody, what you call the baby. Call it what you want, a baby, a human, whatever. It still does not have the authority that we have over it. We can kill that baby at will, and we do. There's billions of people who would say, hey, call the, 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 the pregnancy whatever you want. But man, mom, father has the right to kill that child inside the body and outside the body, body at will. And there's no laws to sit there and say, you can't do it. So there's billions of people who are set against you and would say, no, Cody, call the baby what you want. We have the right to kill it. And so you can bring all your philosophers that believe in pro-life, and billions of people would say, you know what, philosophers? You guys are all wrong. Right? Well, that's just, just, just simply stating I'm wrong isn't an argument. That's an assertion. No, it's a fact. The, the very oh, fact how, how is just, fact? the very fact that there's billions of people who are against you proves that you're not but speaking I, fact. I just, gave you a, but I just gave you a reason why that's not a good argument. I, I gave you a reductio a while ago. Your premise was that because there's disagreement, therefore nobody's right. But I just gave you a counterexample of that, namely that there once was disagreement over whether the Earth was in the center of the universe. No. But see, it turned out no. there was a correct answer to that. There was a correct answer to that. Even though they didn't know it at the time, there was a mind-independent correct answer to that. Okay, Even, Cody. And the fact that people disagreed doesn't mean that no, that there wasn't somebody that was right. Okay, so Cody. Likewise, okay. when it comes to the subject of abortion, just because somebody may just disagree or may not be persuaded by my arguments doesn't mean I'm wrong or that, or that they're uh, right, or that I, I'm right and they're wrong. See, you're stuck. See, right there. <laughs> no, stop right there. You just said, hey, that doesn't mean I'm right or wrong. It doesn't mean they're right or wrong. See, you're stuck. You're stumbling in your words. Uh, 
because you're speaking opinion. Because you cannot empirically prove that abortion is wrong. Because if you could, okay, if okay, who believes the world is flat nowadays? Besides some maybe some people and tribes that that haven't been in touch with mankind, but the modern world, everyone knows the world is round, right? Because it's empirical. You, you have not, and no one on this earth has proven abortion is empirically wrong. No one has. It cannot be done because it's an opinion. But the day you come up with empirical evidence, what, what's that? Why think that you need to empirically test something to know something to be true? Why think that? That's the way it works. Because think about it. Well, I said, why do you think that? Because that's the way life is. Okay, well, let me ask you this. That, that, that's, that's just... That's just so, if I make a state, so if I make a statement of fact, right, and it can't be empirically tested, are you saying that that statement is therefore not true? If I can't empirically not, test not, it? Not everyone. No, hey. I don't know exactly where you're going, but I'm not saying every single thing that cannot be tested cannot be be proven true. I'm not saying every every single thing because that's okay, going. So, so what what, but I am saying that abortion, which this conversation debate is about abortion, I am emphatically saying 100% that abortion, being right or wrong, is someone's opinion, and you have not done a single thing to prove anything otherwise than you saying, hey, well, I believe scientifically and philosophically. Well, science can only say what it is, and in philosophy, there's great di disagreement. So you don't have any case. You're right back down to what I said in the get-go. You're speaking your opinion, and that's okay, but that's all it is. You cannot empirically prove to the world that abortion is wrong, because if you could, everyone would say, okay, yeah, you're right. The world is wrong. You empirically prove it. I don't need to empirically prove it. All I need to do is give good reasons and hopefully persuade a few people, which, you know, I've done in the past. So. Well, everyone's done that. Pro lifers, um, pro choice people have done that. Pro choice has, have swayed people who were against abortion to say, yeah, you're right. We, uh, women just have a choice. So, every, it's, you know what? It's what you just said is like Christianity and Islam. They both convert one another. So, Christianity saying, well, I converted some Muslims, which they have. And then for them to jump from that and go, yeah, Christianity is true because I converted people. Well, Muslims have converted Christians. So for, for Muslims to sit there and go, well, I converted people to my point of view, so it must be true. That's what you're doing, Cody. It's a fallacy. No, that's not what I said. That's no, basically what you said. You're saying I convinced no. some people that abortion was right. Are you then saying by that thought process that you've proven your point emphatically that abortion no. is right? Okay, because if no. you – because if I'm you, saying that because my arguments are good, that means that – because my arguments are sound, that means my position is correct. Okay, can I stop you right there? Okay, now you see you're stuck back in your opinion. You, 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 it's like you're stuck in uh, you know in automatic opinion because you just said I gave good reason, good arguments, right? Well, people who believe in abortion, that that abortion is just and right, will at the same time say the exact same thing back at you, Cody. I've I given know. you no, hang on. They would say to you, Cody. Cody, I've given you good reasons and arguments to show you abortion is right. Right? They, they would do. Yeah, they yeah. would just mimic you. You know well, this. Yeah, but, they would have to, but they would have to give me the reasons and we can go through it. I'm still kind of waiting for you to do that, though. You haven't really given me a reason to think that abortion is okay. You just sort of kept it very general and everything. Well, give me a few assertions along the way. No, but, it's not an oh. assertion. It's a fact. Go around the world, Cody. Billions of people believe abortion is okay, right. Well, that, that's an empirical fact. That's something you can test. You know I'm right. That's something you can test. Well, Billions of people will say abortion is right. That doesn't prove. That doesn't prove your position. No. Mine. It just means there's disagreement. Cody, listen closely. I've said it from the get-go, and I'll say it again. Abortion being right or wrong is just an opinion. Your opinion, my opinion, Scott Clusen over opinion, Stephanie Gray's, we're, we're all speaking opinion. That's why I'm here to confront Christendom to say, to say hey, Christendom, when you say abortion is wrong, you're speaking your opinion. That's all. Everyone has their opinion, but it's just an opinion. That's it. You're not speaking anything that's beyond opinion. So women who have abortion should not even feel threatened by pro-lifers because all they're giving is their opinion. So if you give your opinion, well, you know, fine. Let, let me let me mirror your argument for a moment here. Let, let, let's imagine, let's travel back in time. Let's it's 1860, and I say you abolitionists, right? You against slavery, right? You're just speaking opinion here. You know, stop shaming slave owners for owning slaves here because it's just an opinion. You can't prove that your position is right. So just you know, live and let be. 
let slavery be, le be legal and everything. So, I mean, do you see how ridiculous that sounds? Right no, there? it's not. That's the way life is, Cody. It's not finished here. And it's ridiculous because we all recognize, I assume you do too, that slavery is immoral because human beings are not property to be domesticated by other human beings here. Humans deserve to be treated equally, right? We, I was, we all go for equal rights. That's why we were against segregation, right? In the 19, in, during the Civil Rights Movement, we, it was immoral to treat blacks as less equal than whites. So you believe in gay marriage? And that's all I'm, do and that's all I'm doing. When, when it comes to the case of abortion here, see, I believe that a civil society should treat all human beings equally here, and that includes the unborn. The same way we treat equally blacks, Asians, whites, uh, the mentally handicapped and everything. And in fact, I think history has shown that it's always better whenever we go in, whenever we are inclusive. Because every time we start segregating people or start denying, you know, other groups of humans' rights, we always regret that in the past, be it with blacks, with women, Jews. And so I'm simply just saying that we should, you know, we should live in a society where all humans are treated equally. Okay, uh, 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 okay, Cody, I, I, I can tell you you're a young kid. You're in that la la state of, of mind. But when you get older, you're going to understand every, most everything you just said is la la land. Because right now, I'm going to prove you wrong right now. Because you say, well, we look back in time and go, well, that was wrong. Well, I can go to some KK members right now and say, hey, do you look back at slavery and think slavery was wrong? They would say, right now, KK, Anglo-Saxon Christians, hey, hang on, Cody, hang on. They would sit there and say, no, slavery was just and right, and I wish we had it today in 2013. So you're wrong when you sit there and say, hey, we look back in time and go, hey, um, slavery was wrong. Well, there's people today, KKK would say, no, slavery is just was just then, and it should be just now. And men, too. There's plenty of men who say, hey, I wish we can go back in time when it's 1930, 1940, when men had all the control, when men were the dominant ones, when women had to obey the men. There's men who would like, dude, I wish that was today. So no. We don't all look back in time and think those things, Cody. So you're wrong. But do you okay? So do you? But do you agree with all those people then? You don't, do you? No, of course we don't. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Let me. I have to play some loan. So you don't agree with them, okay? So do you think it was? So you you presumably think it was a good thing for the abolitionists to, you know, argue against slavery? To Absolutely. To persuade people. To Absolutely. Slavery. You okay? One hundred percent, Cody. We're in agreement. What's wrong with, why can those people do that, but then I as a pro-lifer can't do that about abortion? Perfect. Because this is the big difference that you, Scott Klosendorf, Stephanie Gray, Greg Cole, Frank Turk, Sean McDowell, Alan Schumann, Brett Kolko. When you make those kind of comparisons, comparisons between black slavery or whatever, Jews and, and, and Germans, the big difference is this. A mother, the fetus embryo is inside the mom. Period. That relationship cannot be duplicated. So when you bring in ethnic backgrounds, whatever, uh, people, you know, when you bring in blacks, whites, Indians, Jews, whatever, you're talking about it, it's apple and oranges because those blacks were not inside the stomachs of the white man or the white woman. The Jews were not inside the stomachs of the Germans. So those are two different things. We're talking about a fetus, an embryo inside of a woman versus okay, so ethnic cleansing, ethnic destruction, just, two different things. And to make sure I understand, so are you saying that even if, you know, even if I'm right, that it is a person, everything, abortion is justified because of a woman's bodily autonomy, because the fetus is inside her? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. That That is my opinion. Just like it's so, your okay. opinion. So, so uh, just to make sure here, so would it be fair to call this a kind of a sovereign zone thing? Like a, a, your body is like your sovereign zone as long as... And so in the case of a pregnant woman, right, even if it is a human a person, because it's inside her sovereign zone, she has a right to abort it. Is Absolutely. It's, it's her body. It's her body. Okay. Why, so why should you sit there and say so something about a woman's body? Ask, okay, so let, let me ask, I'd like to ask you a question here. Um, there was a drug back in the 1950s called thalidomide. Um, basically, it was a drug that a pregnant woman would take to uh, relieve morning sickness, which is very common amongst pregnant women here. But, however, we, what we discovered was that the drug had a harsh effect on the fetus. It caused the, the, the fetus to be born without arms and legs, and so subsequently the drug was banned. 
Now, here's my question here. If a woman has a right, because after all, it's her sovereign zone, right? Do you think a woman, you know, should have a right to take thalidomide to ease her morning sickness? Do you think she has the right to do that? Yeah, it's her body, absolutely. If she wants to, do you think it's, it's, it, it, it's okay it, it, for her to uh, take a drug that will cause her child to have her arms and legs, to be born without arms and legs. You think that's okay? Yeah, if, if the woman, her, look at, if the woman herself says, I know what I'm doing, and I'm going to do it, then that's her, to each, to, to each their own. So, that, you think it, so you think it was wrong for us to, bet, that drug was made illegal, you think it was wrong for the government to make that drug illegal then? No, 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 I, I agree with you, 100% Cody, that that drug should be outlawed. But at the same wow. time, at the wow. same time, if a woman says, I'm still going to, check, okay, hang on a second, Cody, check this out, women who are pregnant. Now, this we'll both agree on. Some women who are pregnant, who are drug addicts, continue taking drugs. Alcoholic women continue taking alcohol, right? You right. can sit there and, and talk to them till they're blue. They'll still go about their addiction as if they didn't have a child. You know, mm -hmm. t at some point, you have to let people do what they're going to do as long as it's within themselves. And the fetus inside, oh, well, that's just the way life works, Cody. If the fetus gets destroyed, if the fetus comes out lifeless, limbless, whatever, that's just the way life is. That's Cody. What life is not roses. But if we can prevent, What's that? But if we can prevent, shouldn't we do something about it? Which goes back to my question here. You said you think you think it was good that the government banned the drug and made it illegal. Why do you think the government should keep it illegal? Because it was shown to be fallacious. It was shown to be something that. The, the, okay, the drug. Okay, say this. Okay, okay, no, no. The drug. The drug claimed to do something, but it ended up doing something else. So therefore, no, no, it, no, it relieved their morning sickness. We've never found. Yeah, that no, no. But the women didn't know that that would be a side effect. You see what I'm saying? So, so if they came out, okay, to Cody, if these people came out and said, "Hey, I'm going to give you what it's going to relieve. I'm going to give you the side effects." Now, if a woman decides to take it still, then that's her and the child. So be it. That's their life. Okay. Oh, well. So you think they should make the drug legal as long as they let all the women know about the side effects no. that it could cause your child to be born without arms and legs? I tell you what, any smart person, any smart woman, hearing those type of side effects would say no. And to me, but, the ones who would still take it would be mentally ill and oh, well, that's just the way it is. There's mentally ill people that commit suicide. Oh, well, but what can you do? Though, wait a minute, though. You say a woman to be mentally ill, but what about women who have abortions? I mean, many women who have abortions, you know, they're usually scared and everything, or they're in a very bad situation, and so, you know, to help, you know, relieve themselves or, 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 to, or to feel better or whatever, that's why they abort the child, right? It's because, you know, it's usually I don't want a child. I can't care for a child. I, I can't bring a child into this world. So essentially they're using abortion to sort of try and help themselves out here. Wouldn't this, it seems to be the same logic that would apply to the thalidomide drug, but surely you would say that most women who have abortions are mentally ill, would you? No, the women who have abortions know what they're doing. The women who, okay. took, the women who took those drugs you keep speaking about didn't know the side effects. See, that's the difference. But, what if they did? but my question is, what if they did? I mean, after all, her body, it's her body, her choice. Yes, if the yeah. women, I, I, I've said, Cody, I've answered this five, uh, three or four times. If the woman knew everything about the drug and still decided to take it, then so be it. If the drug was legal and the woman said, I'm going to take it, knowing all the consequences, then so be it. That's her life. She has a right to build it and she has a right to destroy it. That's that's just the way life is, man. Well, you're not going to persuade many people of that. I'll tell you that much. No, but... I, I, I'm not here to persuade. I'm here to speak the truth, Cody. Whether the truth, see, this truth hurts you. It hurts you, I can see. But that's the truth. So whether the truth hurts or not, it, I don't care. I'm here to speak the truth, and that's the truth. That's the way your life I'm, works. I'm here to speak the truth too, man. I, I'm very, I'm very much you're, consider you're, myself <laughs> the truth. Hence my YouTube username, of course. Um, the problem is, though, is that uh, you and I seem to disagree on what is true, which is why we have these debates, and that's the point of debates. Well, we right? disagree, we Cody. Ideas. We, we present arguments and counter arguments to try and get at the truth here. Cody, because uh, one of us is right and one of us is wrong. No, 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 no. That that does not necessarily. No, no, I do not buy that argument at all. No, we're, right, we're, hey, we're both right. 
because we're both right because we're both speaking opinion. And I believe my opinion, you believe your opinion. So we're both right, Cody. No one's wrong okay, here. Then why are you saying that? No. You're, you're, you are claiming that you are right, independent of what I think here, that, you know, what, that what I'm saying is supposedly just an opinion here. But yet... That's something you're saying is right. I mean, again, it's it's a self-defeating no, objection. No, no, it's not because I know I'm right. But in your heart, you know you're right. So in that aspect, we're both right. Because in my heart, I'm like, I'm absolutely right. In your heart, you're absolutely right. But ultimately, it doesn't matter because we're both speaking opinion. So that's where I trump you because I'm telling you your downfall is just like Stephanie Gray and Scott Glusendorf is that you're speaking your opinions. And that's okay. Hang on a second. I'm going to read a statement by Stephanie Gray. Do you know who Stephanie Gray is? I, I do. Yeah, yeah so. she's one of the, so. she's the top woman abortion pro lifer in the world. This yeah, is, the, yeah. yeah. Now, now this is, this is what I've been telling you the whole time from day one, Cody. This is her. I, and this is verbatim. We respect there are various opinions on abortion. Here's another one. There are people who hold different viewpoints on abortion. Now, they are on abortion. I just added that, added that part to make it easy to understand. But this is her own words. We respect there are various opinions. There are people who hold different views. See, what I've been telling you, she even says the top woman apologist for pro-life says we respect there are various opinions on abortion. I so too. there you I go. Agree with that. So you're speaking your opinion. Okay. But, so, it doesn't mean, but it doesn't mean I have to think they're right. No, 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 no. You don't have to think they're right. But when you understand, Cody, that you're speaking your opinion, all that dogma stops. When you really understand in your heart that I'm not speaking some truth that's beyond mankind, but I'm just speaking my feelings and emotions, then you can sit at the table with everyone and say, hey, this is how I feel. And then shake everyone's hand and go home and say, hey, do what you got to do because I'm doing what I got to do. And, and since we're speaking opinion, no one's above each other. So, hey, do what you feel is right in your heart. I don't agree with you, but if that's how you feel, then do it. See, if you really realize the truth I'm speaking to you, you would understand that. And if Stephanie Gray knew that, she would understand that, and she wouldn't be walking around doing these uh, abortion protests with, you know, babies ripped apart, you know, out there, like, hey, this is what abortion looks like. If Scott Glusendorf knew for sh in his heart that he was only speaking opinion, he wouldn't be going around, you know, trying to change people's hearts. He would just say, hey, I'm speaking my opinion. If I convince you, fine. If I don't, fine. I'm going to go home with my wife and kids and have a great well, day. Well, like I said before, pro-lifers such as myself and Stephanie Gray and Scott Clues and North and all those guys, you know, it's not just opinion here. I mean, that would be immoral for us to, you know. I just read. Babies, I just read. Are, I just read to you. Are, well, like, there's a difference between respecting what someone else thinks versus just saying they're wrong. I mean, like. Obviously, it wouldn't be respectful if you just said, if, if I just said, well, hey, you know, you're, you're stupid for thinking this or that or anything. No, no. What I would say is I, you know, I usually ask people, well, why do you think that? How did you come to that conclusion? Or, and then have you considered this? Have you considered what I think here? And, you know, I, I would then go to present arguments against their position here. It's the same thing with abortion. Pro-lifers, such as myself, were motivated because... It's again. I know I keep using this example here because it's just you just don't kill babies. That's wrong. The same way, it's also wrong to enslave people. No, that's okay. No, no, no. I, no, I reject that premise because if you're gonna keep coming that back to that, I reject it right now because slaves are not inside the white man or the black man or the Chinese that's man. Not the point. No, no, that is the point. The point is is that a mom and, and embryo has a they have a connection. They have a, uh, 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 um, the mom has a right over that fetus that you can't compare to ethnic cleansing or no, ethnic but, destruction. But you, no, wait a minute now, but you just a while ago were slamming people like Scott Klusendorf, claiming that we should, you know, stop forcing our opinions on other people here. But yet I was trying to say, why can't you say the same thing to people, the abolitionists against slavery? Because they were, they saw something that they recognized was immoral and was exploiting a class of human beings for other people's benefit in a bad way. It's the same, and so... No, all, no, 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 all I'm saying is that there's two different... The same way, we recognize that it's immoral, and so we take steps to try and prevent that from happening here. No, That's we, why we're 
adamant about making abortion illegal because it unjustly takes the life of an innocent human being. Hey, that's fine. You that, that's fine. That that's your opinion. But back to the uh, 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 black, white, ethnic cleansing, slavery, whatever, ab uh, abolitionist. Um, the point there is this: is that slavery was not the slave being inside the womb of the man or the woman. That's the difference. That a mom having a woman having an embryo inside of her, that situation is totally different from enslaving adults or children. That's it, it's two different things because since you, you're, you're trying to say, well, this is the way it was in slavery, and this is what they how they went about it then. No, an embryo or fetus inside of a mom, that's that, that's two different things. So if you're gonna use it once in a while, fine, but if you're gonna stand there, no, that I reject that premise because that slave is not inside that person. So okay, well, you're, but you're jumping to two different you're, you're jumping to two different things here. You started off by saying that. Again, pro-lifers such as myself, that you know we shouldn't you know impose things we think are immoral on other people. And then, I, but then when I but then when I gave the slavery example to help show the connection, you then jumped to a different point, namely, well, no, abortion is okay because bodily autonomy, because you know it's inside the woman. That's a different point from what I was answering. So okay, so hang on a second. Can, we, can, we can go back into the bodily. No, autonomy no, no, st no. Okay, state your point. State your point. Again. But my point was simply that you know. We rightfully wouldn't condemn, you know, the abolitionists, you know, because they thought they recognized that it was immoral to have slaves and everything. And so, by the same token, you, regardless of whether, what what you think about abortion here, it, you can't consistently praise the abolitionists for, you know, for for what they did, versus condemning what pro-lifers do on the basis simply that, well. You know, you shouldn't just be forcing your moral views on other people because that's what both – in both these cases, that's what was happening. You had a group of people that were arguing and trying to persuade and you know, impose upon society a moral point of view, right? Now, of course, we can debate they, you know, whether it's right or wrong or not, which side is correct. But the point is you can't consistently praise one and condemn the other for that same reason. That was what I was getting at here. And then you jumped, in the, and then rather than reply to that, you jumped to a whole different point about bodily autonomy. Cody, so, let me – Cody, I don't know. I think you're getting confused. You're misstating me. When you talk about abolitionists, I've said it before. Right. There were tons and tons of people against abolitionists, against them. Matter of fact, they got killed. Right. Well, killed. But when, weren't they – would you say – would it be right to say that those people were wrong? Oh, absolutely. But in the but those people would say to me, "No, you're wrong." You see? You see what I'm saying? Okay, but see, see, but they were wrong. Though. They may have thought. No, 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 no. That's where you know. That's where you're wrong because no, it's no, it, it's well, all no, opinion. You said I'm wrong. You can't say. You can't just start condemning. Wait, you're saying I'm wrong? I thought it was just all opinion. It right? is, in that my is. opinion, I can say but you're wrong. I, I, I hey, 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 in, in my wrong. opinion, That's I can. Just your opinion. What's that? Exactly. If you understand, yeah. If you, why are you trying to persuade me then? You know? be because I'm teaching you this that it's your opinion, and that when you say abortion is wrong, you're not saying anything. That's my point that I'm teaching you and teaching the world that pro-lifers all they're doing is giving their opinion, and when you realize all you're doing is giving your opinion, but you'll calm down. But if you're trying to teach that, as you call it, to other people, isn't that really no different than what I'm doing with my pro-life stance? You're imposing your point of view on other people. You're trying to convince other people that you are right about this. Because otherwise, you know, why even bother persuading people? I mean, it just, it's, again, sounds kind of like dogma to me. Oh, you can call it dogma. But the point is I'm speaking. Okay, no, but... the point is uh, um, I'm speaking fact to you, that you're speaking your opinion. That's it. That's a fact, and and that totally destroys the pro-lifers' position. It destroys Scott Lusendorf's position, Stephanie Gray, Gray Kuko, Frank Turk, Sean McDowell, Alan Schumann, Brett Coco, all pro-lifers. When you present to them saying, "Hey, you're just speaking your opinion," that's it. So understand that that you're speaking your opinion and nothing more. So women who have abortions can go about their lives. It's like, oh, they're not speaking truth. They're speaking their opinion that they think is true. So since they're speaking their opinion, then I'm not, the women would say, hey, I, I, I'm getting abortion, and to me, abortion is right for me. 
and, and you're saying, hey, abortion is wrong, but since we're both speaking opinion, then hey, screw you. That's your opinion. You think I'm wrong? I think you're wrong. Cool. We're going our ways. And that's what I'm teaching you and teaching the world, that it comes down an opinion. What's that? But the problem, the reason I can't accept that is because that you don't have to accept it. Invalidate my position any more than it would invalidate the abolitionist position on slavery. I, I just can't see how you, you could just, uh, as I've been saying, you can apply that same logic to the abolitionists. You know? Ex so okay, okay, Cody, I slavery, let slaves go about. I mean, I just can't see Cody. How I just Separate. told you, I just said it. I'm saying for the fifth time, the abolitionists were speaking their feelings, their emotions, their convictions. But those slaveholders were dead set against them so much that they killed abolitionists. And and as those yeah. abolitionists spoke their their truth, those slave owners spoke their truth. And ultimately, it came down to a war. But when you want, if you and people like Stephanie Gray and Scott Klusenov want to bring up, well, you know, what about slavery and what about the Jews and all this? Okay, let's go there, Cody. Because all you're going to come back to is opinion. The Jews in their mind said, I mean, the Germans in their mind said the Jews are, are not humans. But the Jews said in their minds, no, we are human. So what do we have? We got two sides with their convictions. And who won that point? The Germans won the Germans won until the world came in to help the Jews out. Because if the world didn't come in, the Jews would probably be wiped off the face of this earth, Cody. And you know this to be true. It had nothing to do with, uh, 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 um, well, this was wrong, what the Jews were doing, and the Germans finally figured it out. No, the Germans like, no, this is right, we're going to finish the job. But the world came against, part of the world came against the Germans and conquered the Germans. Because if the Germans would have ruled the world, guess what? Germans would have been gone. I mean, the Jews would have been gone. So it still comes back, Cody. When we hang up, learn you this this will you this you and everyone listening will understand. Wow, breast strong is right. It all comes down to feelings and emotions and convictions, ultimately opinions. There is no there is no 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 truth that one could say and point to this is the truth and we all must abide by it. There is no such thing, Cody. Realize that. That's the way life is. I'm just giving you reality. And apart this is the, the, the give me one more give me one more minute. The problem with Christians is this. A lot of Christians, that is. They don't want to accept reality. The reality is, Scott, I mean, it's the reality, Cody, is that you can't prove your God exists. You can't prove your Jesus exists. You can't prove hell. You can't prove heaven. You can't prove all these things. All you can do is give your opinions, your beliefs. That's it. And you're stuck. That's why there's such things as Islam and Hinduism. And a million other gods, because you can't prove gods exist, so you can make up any god you want and be just as equal as your Christian god. Any god. Go ahead. Actually, actually I can give arguments for all of those. That, and, that take, hey, Muslims that would give take arguments us, too. Uh, that would take us field to a different topic, of course. But um, You can't give an argument for God. Your God. If no. you give an argument for your God, it's giving an argument for Zeus, Thor, Hercules, and every other god. Well, if you want to use the Kalam, if you want to aware of any argument for Zeus, but that'd be, I'd be interested to hear one. Yeah, the what? moment you argue fine tuning, the moment you or you you uh, argue uh, uh, um, the way the world is and all that stuff, the moment you argue that, you're arguing for all gods. Even William Lane Craig admitted after giving an hour, two hour lecture, a kid asked him, What about Zeus? What about Allah? And William Lane Craig folded. He goes, well, actually, yeah, when I use these arguments, I am arguing for a general God, you know, not not well, the Christian I, God. I, here's the thing. I actually know William Lane Craig. I'm in his defenders class and everything, and he's also stated that he, his arguments are part of a cumulative case. Yes, it's true that arguments like the Kalam, fine-tuning, moral— Thank you. You folks, admit Brett Strong is those, right. Those argue for a general God. You're Thank right, you. But the argument— but, but, the, the, but the argument that you're missing out that does argue for the Christian God would be the resurrection, the argument for the resurrection of Jesus. And like Jesus was who he said he was and he rose from the dead and all that, that proves the Christian God exists. Okay, no, 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 okay, Cody. No, 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 stop right there. I'm going to get you because that, that's where I'm good at. That's my expertise. I would tell William Lane Craig, no, no, I would tell William Lane Craig just like I would tell you. Matter of fact, when you see William Lane Craig send this message from Brett Strong that when he argues for Jesus, he's arguing from a point that even he himself said that if when I argue for Jesus, that it doesn't carry 
the confidence one can have in the Civil War. That's how bad his argument is, that he himself admitted that when I argue for Jesus, the case of Jesus, it is not as secure as even the Civil War that happened hundreds of years ago. So when he argues for Jesus, when he's being honest, he would tell you, like, yeah, uh, 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 I'm not arguing for certainty. I'm arguing on probability, but not something That's to be certain about. Works, yes. So don't sit here and say that, that, that probability proves your God is true. No, it doesn't. Probability is, hey, this probably it happened. It proves beyond the reasonable doubt. Okay, Cody, Cody, let me straighten you on this because this, this is my expertise, Jesus. Did you know the, the, the material that you, or William Lane Craig, uses to talk about Jesus? That material, the best material we have, no court in America would accept as evidence. They would say, I don't know what you call it, but it ain't evidence. Because we don't have an original. We don't have anything close to an original. We don't, as Bar Ehrman would say, we don't even have a copy of 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 a copy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, of any book of the Bible. So don't sit here and say you have a, no, 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 hang on, Cody. No, no, hang on. Don't sit here and say you have a case for Jesus when I just said what I just said what I just said. You don't. But Bart Ehrman, who maybe may be interested to note, also says that he admits when pressed that the New Testament text we have is 99.95% textually pure. He's a textual critic here. All the variations are so minor, so we can safely say that we have an accurate copy. No, but you can't. We don't have any. No, 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 hang on. Cody, the entire first century, we don't have anything of any book of the Bible. So don't sit here and tell me that you can create a case for Jesus when this is my area of expertise. You can't. All you can do, when when Dan Wallace says, oh, we can re we, we can recreate 99.9% of the Bible, even Bart Ehrman said, prove it. Because Bar Ehrman debated Dan Wallace, and Dan Wallace said, hey, Bar Ehrman, we can reproduce the New Testament with 99% accuracy. Bar Ehrman said, prove it, because we don't have an original. So how can you make that statement? So, Cody, go okay, back well, to, go send so that. We're, we're, getting, we're getting a little too far afield here. Exactly, because um, that's my area of expertise. Back, Thank you. We're returning back to the question of abortion here. Send that to, to okay, play this piece, record it, and give it to William Lane Craig. He will see that he's been defeated by Brett Strong. Back to the abortion. Go ahead. Um, I'm probably going to have to go about five minutes or something, though, so we should probably gear towards wrapping this up, unless there's anything additional you'd like to say here. But, but you know, the, like I said earlier here, the reason, again, like, I oppose abortion because, you know, I, I get scientific evidence, you know, for the biologically man to the unborn, philosophical evidence that no essential difference whatnot and you know based off this you know i think we i think i have good reasons of course i haven't gotten a chance to really elaborate on this because i haven't heard much of a counter to it that you know abortion unjustly takes the life of an innocent human being you're speaking your and opinion thus, again because we both know there's billions of people who say that abortion is right why do you keep coming back to your opinion you might recall in the last few hangouts that I recorded here, there were, of course, people who disagreed with me. Of course. But of course, we talked about it. We gave arguments. We were trying to persuade each other here. Yeah, it's all you can do. Agreed that one of us was right and one of us was wrong. No. So, otherwise, why debate? There's no point otherwise. So. No, there is a good point to debate to show someone to say, hey, Cody, you have every right to say abortion is wrong. But you have no right to sit here and say, to the level of what you're trying to say, like, no, abortion is actually wrong. It's just, it's not my opinion. No, it's above that. It is actually wrong. I'm asking you to prove it. You say, what's well, science? Science only says what it is. You say philosophy. Philosophy is a bunch of disagreement. You have no foundation. I keep bringing it back. You keep saying, well, I've given you reason. I've given you science and philosophical. And I keep pointing out to the same thing, Cody, that science can only say what it is, and philosophy can only give their thoughts upon it. Just like I can give my thoughts, you can give your thoughts, and the Chinese give your thoughts. That's that's all you're doing. That's because, Cody, Cody. Very, that's kind of an ignorant statement. No, it's a factual course. statement, Cody. It's philosophy. a fact. It's a fact, Cody. Philosophy, well, uh, philosophy <laughs> is just another way of an, it's just another way of answering questions. I mean, science only deals with empirical stuff. Like science can tell us, you know. Um, what is it? How strong the force of gravity is, or, yeah. or, or, or how, or how, you know, what temperature does water turn to ice, and things like that. Though, but philosophy, well, obviously, science can't answer questions of morality, the existence of God, 
soul or things like that. So that's where we turn to philosophy it, or, and metaphysics. It answers other questions or, or questions of free will and things like that. So, I mean, it's not guesswork as, uh, as some people wrongly assume here. It's just – no, it's just uh, – I'm trying to figure out who said that. Other people have said this. It basically uses principles of reason, right? We reason, you know, we give arguments, and then we come to conclusions. So. Okay. Um, have you ever have Have you ever heard of Alvin Plantinga? He's um. Of course, I have a signed copy of God, Freedom, and Evil: War to Christian Belief. Okay, I've good. Because if you study him, he's um. Uh, matter of fact, he mentored William Lane Craig, philosophy, right? Yeah. That's right. Al Alvin Plantinga said. That when you boil philosophy down, all it is is thinking. That's it, thinking. Yeah. So, so no, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Hey, no, 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 Cody, hang on. Thinking. What is thinking? Giving your opinions ultimately. That's it. So you're wrong again, Cody. You're trying to claim something that you can't. You're trying to claim philosophy to be something that it cannot deliver. Philosophy cannot deliver ultimate truth that stands for all people. All. Philosophers that's can do – no, 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 hang on, Cody, Cody, hang on. I'm teaching you something. All philosophy can do is give their varying thoughts. Just like we're giving our thoughts upon abortion, that's all they can do. They can't give you any ultimate authority because there stands no ultimate authority. We humans are the ultimate authority, and since we disagree, then we're all even. And then the winners, who you know who wins, Cody? You know who decides abortion is legal or not? The majority. The strong, like I said in the very beginning, the strong decide what goes on in society, period. Just like in America, we vote on abortion. And when we vote, the majority wins, and that's the law of the land for abortion, that's regardless of how you feel about it, Cody. That's Same why, thing. That's why one of the, well, that's how the legal system works, which is why we pro-lifers work to convince people that we're right. But that's, this has been a very interesting philosophical statement you've just been making here, so... It's a Thank fact. You. It's not a. St it's a fact, Cody. I'm speaking fact here. I'm speaking fact that you're speaking opinion when you say that abortion is wrong. I'm speaking fact when you want to say philosophy can give us any certainty. It can't. No philosopher, Cody, will say what you just said. William Lane Craig will not say what you just said, Cody. Yes, he will. No, he won't. He. I, I, I've known. I've known him for three years, man. Listen to Alvin Plantinga. He will say there's. Philosophy does not give you that certainty. Philosophy is thinking, Cody. I never said it. I never said it did give certainty. Although it does, the only thing, although it does give you certainty, granted, about the fact that I exist, as Descartes pointed out. But well, forget that part. It doesn't give you certainty on abortion because the point is abortion. There is no certainty. Well, said, whoever said we had to have certainty? What's wrong? Well, with how are you? Okay, no, no, no. Then how are you proving well, your point? Okay, doubt. Cody, you keep saying I've proven my point. How are you proving it then when I you said just said philosophy? I said beyond a reasonable. To who? Okay, Cody, to who? To yourself? Because you haven't convinced me. You haven't convinced the beings of Chinese and Africans and Southeast Asians. Who, who have you given certainty besides you and the choir? I Don't you see this? Do, we okay. haven't, but you and I haven't really gotten much into the debate because you keep going to this general kind of, you know, no. opinions and everything. We never get into, we haven't gotten to the nitty gritty of the ethics of abortion, like what, which is the fun part of the debate, you know, what makes a person a person, why is killing wrong, things of that sort. We haven't really gotten into that, so I haven't gotten much of a chance to really Well you know hey we can questions. do a we can do a part two on that one if you like. We'll do a part two. Because we're gonna ready ready to wrap it up. Uh, uh, we can do a part two whenever you want. You wanna do a part two on that? We could, yeah. I, that's the fun that's the fun part of the debate. Okay, when we get done we, we, um, you can email me and we can go and uh, we'll we'll set some um, parameters on that one and we can go there. But we'll finish so it on can, this. This is my – okay. okay, let me finish. This, very, this has definitely been a very interesting uh, talk. So. Well, I'm Brett Strong. I'm presenting um, – my blog is JesusIsAHoax.com. I mean JesusIsAHoax.blogspot.com. Brett Strong, I, like I said, I've debated. Uh, I've been on Redemption Radio, Backpack Radio, STR, KKLA uh, Radio. Um, I've debated Greg Cole, Jay Warner Wallace. Jeff Durbin, Vocab Malone. Uh, I've been on Calm Radio. Um, just promote myself right there. Check out my blog. Every, I mean, check out my YouTube channel, everyone. It's uh, Mr. Brett Strong. That's Mr. Brett Strong, my YouTube channel. And just to make my closing statement, let, and I'll give you the final word, Cody. My final statement is this. The final statement is all pro-lifers, Scott Klusendorf, Stephanie Gray, 
Craig Cucco, Frank Turk, Sean McDowell, Alan Schumann, Brett Cocco. All they're doing, all pro-lifers, pro all they can do ever is give their opinion. That's it. They cannot go above that and give you a, a ultimate law that says it's wrong and everyone, everyone must obey. They can't because the minute they try to say it, you say, well, prove that. They can't. They have to be like you, Cody. Well, science says this and philosophy says that. Well, we all know philosophy, science does not say right or wrong. And philosophy, it's a wide open market. It does not give you any foundation. So the final point is this, is that all pro-lifers can do, and I will debate Scott Glusendorf, Stephanie Gray, anyone on this, is give you, pro-lifers can give you their opinion. And let me close with Stephanie Gray's very, very own words again. Stephanie Gray says, we respect, there are various opinions on abortion. There are people who hold different viewpoints on abortion. That is the most powerful woman pro-lifer in the world, Stephanie Gray, admitting that we respect there are various opinions. And might I add, Scott, Scott Klusendorf starts off many of his lectures and debates by saying, I'm going to give you my reasons. I'm going to make arguments. But notice he never said, I'm going to give you some ultimate authority that says abortion is wrong. He can't because Scott Klusendorf, Stephanie Gray, they're all stuck in opinion. And that's a fact. And that's a reality that we all must accept. Abortion, be it right or wrong, it's up to the person. Everyone's allowed to present their case. Everyone's allowed to say each other's wrong. But ultimately, it comes down to it's just an opinion. Do you believe abortion is right or wrong? It's just an opinion. And I'm going to shut up and let you finish. And um, I will email each other. And I will say, Cody um, Nelson, it's been a great pleasure uh, talking to you. Look forward to seeing this on. Um, maybe you can send me a copy of this because I haven't recorded. Okay. It'll be uh, once I hit end broadcast. It should within a few minutes be up on my YouTube channel. So then you know from there you can like you know you can copy it into your computer and then upload it on your YouTube channel if you'd like. Or, yeah, or just look. Yeah, sort. just a little bit on my new uh, my YouTube channel, and I'm gonna shut up, give you the final word, and when you say the final word, Cody, it's done. I'm not saying anything else. You're it, baby. Thanks a lot. It was great, and we'll do another All debate right. too. Well, I guess my my final point, you know, I, you know, to, to just at the risk of to avoid repeating myself here, um, you know, the points I gave earlier about the scientific case for the the humanity of the unborn and uh, philosophic case, and also as I stated earlier, you know, I believe that we should uh, society we, that that the civil society should treat all humans with equal 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 give equal rights equal respect and dignity. And I'm very much taken, I, I love this quote here, I'll finish, I'm going to just end with this quote here from by Christopher Caxor in his book, The Ethics of Abortion, I highly recommend it to anybody watching this video. It's only, uh, okay, so the quote is this, it's this quote, history provides strong evidence in favor of an inclusive society in which all human beings are respected as persons having dignity as opposed to an exclusive society. Indeed, when considered in the light of history, it seems apparent that every single time the performance view has been chosen over the endowment view. Gross moral mistakes were made. Although the legacy of discrimination is not entirely behind us, virtually no one today, at least in the West, would publicly defend any of the applications of the performance view, slavery, misogyny, racism, sexism, anti-Catholicism, or anti-Semitism. Every previous division of mankind and was divided into two classes by some version of performance evaluation, in which one half was permitted to dispose of the other at will men exploiting women, whites selling blacks, the young dispatching the old, the rich utilizing the poor, the healthy overpowering the sickly, and are nearly universally recognized as evil. Do we really have a reason to believe that for the very first time in human history we are justified in treating some human beings as less than fully persons? Or will we be judged by history as just one more episode in the long line of exploitation of the powerful over the weak? End quote. So yeah, this has been this has been a good talk, Brett. So definitely you know, keep in touch to set up part two here. So absolutely, man, it was great, man. All right, well let me just stop the recording. Broadcast.